Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and if you're wondering how I'm able to play video games if I'm blind, if you take a look at the video here, you'll be able to see exactly what I see when I play video games. This is a highlight of my podcast, Access Granted, the podcast of conversations about accessibility in video games. If you want to check out the full episode of this podcast, you can search for Access Granted on your favorite podcast service, or you can be able to click on the link in the description down below. Now, let's roll the clip. Do you think um, that we will ever get to a point where there is uh, a, a, like a 100% totally accessible uh, game? No, I don't think that we will ever, like this is a really hard thing for players to necessarily hear, um, but as a designer, a game designer, I don't think it's possible to make a game that's 100% accessible to every type of player because all games have to have some level of barrier in them to make them a game. Um, what we can do and what I really hope for is that the big games, the games that hit the most people, that affect the most people, have such a good grasp on accessibility that they are mostly accessible to everyone. Because we all know as, di as disabled people that you know nothing's ever perfect. Like we're constantly having to adapt and find our own way to interact with the world and get around in the world. And that's just part of being disabled. And I think that's the same for games too. Like there's always going to be a point where like you're like, okay, well I have to come up with something to get past this particular thing. There are many things that I think that players shouldn't have to do that with, that we should be really, like we have an ethical responsibility to make sure that players don't have to if they don't have to. So for example, like if our control scheme is causing someone pain or injury, that's terrible. We don't want that. We we want to do our best to help a player adapt and work around that. I don't like the word overcome, so I'm deliberately walking around that word. Yep. Yep. No, <laughs> I get it. Yep. Just watching. Like a lot of a lot of people will use that word, but I think the reason I don't like that word is it puts the responsibility on the disabled person. Like it's your job to overcome a barrier. But it's not really like it shouldn't be. It should be we should all work together to make this make this happen. So yeah, I don't think there will 100% be a 100% accessible game to everyone, but what is accessible when it comes to games, right? It's like I say, it's different to other forms of accessibility where it's hard pass or fail. It's more like, is this an acceptable barrier? Mm -hmm. Like, is it okay that we have to push through this a little bit or work around it a little bit? Um, and is that what we want play? Like, is that the experience we want players to have? Or is that something where you're like, oh, okay, so this particular barrier actually pulls players out of the experience, so we need to work on that. So um, say remapping, which is one that's becoming more and more common, thankfully. Um, if we don't have remapping, you're pulling a player out of that because then they're like, okay, how can I reconfigure my controller setup or my keyboard setup, and how can I find software or like peripherals that will help me with that, um, when maybe they don't have to do that? And if they don't have to do that, then great. So yeah. So I was actually that um, that was one thing I was I was kind of ask about was um, do you think then in that case um, like say for the example of like remapping controls um, is there like is that would would, would you consider that as sort of uh, and then other sort of features as sort of like universal accessibility settings that all games should at least attempt to have or or have. Um, and in that case, like, uh, what are, what would you see are, are sort of like, what would be considered like a universal setting? Yeah, so I think there's some, like, I don't like to use the word basics because like implementing these things is never basic sure. for games development. Like, especially at this point where tools are at for a lot of studios, like, like Unity and Unreal or even like the proprietary tools often don't have this built in because it's not been thought of until now. But so, but there are definitely things that I think are very important because they cover such a spectrum of accessibility and they really break down like 
the key barriers that will allow players in and include more players, which I think is just so important and powerful for disabled players, especially um, disabled players are so isolated in society in general. Um, like, I think it's fair to say that, like, we often feel isolated. We feel excluded from so much. There's so much we can't do that we have to come to terms with and we have to work through in ourselves. And games shouldn't have to be that too. Like games provide us an amazing quality of life. They they give us so many experiences we might not have otherwise. And they include us in this huge community. Um, and I think that really can't be unsaid. And so the, the key ones that I would say bring more people in fairly significantly are subtitles for sure. Um, remapping is definitely one of them. But then there's a lot of things that go along with those things. Like we need to make sure we're looking at our UI and text very cl like closely and keeping an eye on that. Um, and then, so I guess that's reading comprehension, but it's also visual accessibility. Um, and I usually do four, so I'm missing one. Uh... I would say, yeah, subtitles, remapping. Audio options. Yeah, audio, yeah, yeah. Volume sliders. Like, it's like it's amazing. <laughs> don't even have a master volume slider still. And that's just one thing that I think should be a no-brainer, really, at this point. And a lot of, a lot, I think a lot of things Nintendo games in particular are a little bit guilty of this. And I think that's because they're like, oh, well, it's the Switch or it's the DS where there's a volume control on the console, but that's less and less true when it's um, docked now. Mm -hmm. um, also, that shouldn't be the only, like, because someone maybe uh, have mobility um, disabilities and they need someone else to go change that volume for them because it's like on a table or it's out of their reach or whatever. And that's what I really want to avoid is things like that, where so you have to ask someone else to help you. Um, right. And then I think there's more that we can do beyond that. But those are the four that I think all games should have. I think we're at a point where it's not necessarily easy for all games to have that remapping for example is a really really complex problem to solve um and often requires control redesign especially if it hasn't been thought of from the beginning so from a design and development perspective i actually worked on a lot of control remapping last year and so i can't say much because it's like basically so much of it is under nda um but like broadly you can't implement control remapping in a game that already exists so say it's a sequel or um, a game in a long-standing franchise, or even a live service game, um, those three scenarios especially are difficult because you often have control screens that are incredibly complex already. Right. Uh, especially when you look at a live service game, which things keep get, like features keep getting added over time, it gets more and more complex. And so, in order to implement just remapping, it's not just remapping at that point you have to look at like, okay, how do we simplify the control scheme? Cause it's no good really just allowing players to swap buttons. Cause that doesn't solve most people's problems. Like remapping in my opinion is more than just swapping buttons. Sometimes you see remapping and that's what we get. Um, so for example, gears five came out, had remapping fantastic. It was very robust, but really when you look at it, it's just swapping buttons around, um, which is good for some people and but that it means you're often sacrificing things that you might not have to. Um, so like certain actions you might not be able to do if there's some buttons you can't reach um, or use. And so, yeah, it becomes a really complex problem. So even though those are the things I think all games should have, I don't think we're at a point in the industry where it's easy to do that is what I'm trying to say. Sure. Unfortunately, I think we get there, but it's, it's very complicated. <laughs>